We uh, we were at Fio's house shortly after you had moved in. Yeah, no, this is good. We had a good. lot of nice new stuff around, and we tried <laughs> melting our own plastic on his stove. We ruined his wife's pots. <laughs> uh, we did. We're pulling. <laughs> we bought like melt. It was like a melt your own plastic kit. So we bought it, and we're trying to melt it on the stove and burning the hell out of ourselves and pulling hot molten <laughs> plastic and dripping all over yep. it was it was awful and at what point are you guys like all right maybe this is stupid yeah <laughs> a lot <laughs> right yeah <laughs> this is start up the storefront today's guests are matt adams and matt fioretti of quick cord quick cord was born out of adams long career in the marines where using paracord was a necessity that always came with frustration like so many other entrepreneurs, he told himself that there's got to be a better way. Together with Fioretti, they launched QuickCord on the back of a Kickstarter campaign that raised 350% of their original fundraising goal. So listen in as we cover everything from their original prototype using a toilet paper roll, their philosophy of always take the meeting, and how they're taking inspiration from Camelback in order to win a military contract. Now, back to the episode. Welcome to the podcast. We're joining from the birthplace of basketball, Springfield, Massachusetts, with two legends, Maddie and Theo, <laughs> who just started Quick Cord. How do you how do you explain Quick Cord to people when you give the quick you know the quick high level of what the company is trying to do? The the elevator pitch. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna toss that over to yeah, toss yeah that absolutely. over to you, there, big guy. Uh, so Quick Cord is a handheld uh, emergency utility device that stores, cuts. Um, and dispenses your paracord untangled every time. As a bonus feature, it also has an emergency nighttime signaling device. Uh, for those of you that don't know what paracord is, paracord is used in the military, outdoors community, um, all over the place. It's used like duct tape. You tie stuff up uh, that breaks. Yeah. The premise in, in the military is that you're tying something up because something went wrong uh, and you need to fix it in order to move on with the mission but you pull out your paracord and it's a tangled rat's nest and you waste vital, vital time untangling your cord to get out of the bad situation you're already in. So, And you were in the military and yep. so you know this problem well. I know it very well. <laughs> Spent over eight years in the uh, the Marine Corps. And, Thank you uh, for your service. My pleasure. And was that, was that the whole thing? So for you, when you were in the Marine Corps, you probably dealt with this issue a bunch. And as soon as you got out, were you thinking like, there's got to be a better way to do this? Or what, what was kind of like the first seed into wanting to develop a product that would solve the problem so the easy answer to that is there's tons of problems with the way the military and marine corps mm. conducts business and that sure. you know dictates down to the lowest level this is how we do it and that's how it's going to be done and paracord is one of those things that everyone has to carry it you know it, your squad leader tells you your team leader tells you everyone has to have it but there's no good way to use it mm -hmm. so when you get told hey get your cord out and you're pulling it out and trying to untangle it. It's just like, it's got to, yeah. this sucks. Yeah. There's got to be a better way. <laughs> and know? time is everything. And so you're, Absolutely. I mean, it could be life or death depending on the situation. Yep. And then when did you guys think about launching this company? I'll jump yeah. in on that one. Yeah, so on. so one phone call. Yeah. One, one, <laughs> one faithful day, Adams calls me up and he says, Hey man, um, I've been thinking a lot and I, I got a great idea. I was like, Oh, nice. What, what do you got going on? He goes, well, he goes, I took a, I took an old toilet paper roll. I, uh, you're like, I, okay, I, I, see I, you later. You know, so it gets better. He goes, I took an old toilet paper roll. He goes, I, uh, I wrapped the thing in duct tape and I stuffed some cord in it and poked the, poked a little hole in it. So the cord comes out. I was like, brilliant. 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 That was like your first prototype. Uh, and that was, that was the first prototype. Uh, he told me why he did it. He just, that was kind of like the, yeah, exactly. It was first prototype. Yeah. And he said, Hey, what do you think? Um, after he gave me the, the pitch about how the military, has this problem with paracord and there should be a simple solution. So let's kind of develop that simple solution. I said, oh yeah, I'm on board. So his first question was, do you think we can patent this thing? Mm. And I mean, as of now, we actually have two fully issued well, patents Well, the answer was, hey, can we patent that thing? And the answer was absolutely not. Right, yeah, right. So the, I mean, the first the first process we went through, the fun lumps and bumps is like we, we go through the first provisional patent, but before you do like a patent search and stuff like that, and it was the first thing I did. And it uh, turns out there's things out there like a floss container. Well, floss so container is can... basically the exact same thing as what we had originally thought the idea would be. Got it. And so if you write a patent, all your your claims and your patent are going going to hit that yeah. floss container and probably not get through. So 
we sat back down at the drawing board and kind of came up with something similar to what you're looking at now. Um, and for and, your business, I remember we talked about this a little bit a long time ago. The patent is super important, right? Because if you want to get a military contract, the patent is effectively the only way to do it. Absolutely. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. With getting a military contract, few scary things. But yeah, you, you want to have a patent. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is you want to have a working prototype. Mm -hmm. If you don't have those two things, they can actually take the product, say, that's a great idea and contract out to the uh, lowest bidder. Yeah. yeah. So, so like an Sweet. Thanks for the idea. We'll take that. <laughs> as an entrepreneur, though, patenting can be something that takes a long time, can be expensive, slows down any company. Yes. But for you guys, it was like a necessary evil. And so what was like the first step in, in even getting a patent? You developed a prototype. Yeah. So we developed the first prototype. You know, then we actually kind of, we it wrote It was more the, like our own kind of like focus groups with each other, like- Hey, what else can it do? Because not only do you say, yeah, I, I, we need to get a patent and protect this idea, but once that patent's in, you know, there's no adjusting it. So we really had to right. stare at the toilet paper roll for a long time. <laughs> that sounds good. Say, that sounds good. What are, you know, <laughs> what else, what else are we going to put on it? What else can it do? And then you run the risk of, of over engineering and getting way off into the weeds. And we wanted to keep it a simple, simple product. Mm hmm. The good thing about us is we had a little bit of help. I worked for a company at the time who had done a lot of patent work. So I had a good understanding of the whole patent process. Engine, in the yep. engine world? Okay, got And it. then the other good thing about us is that my uncle happened to be a patent attorney. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so that, I mean, that actually worked out really well. Yeah. Um, kept costs low. Kept gave you a costs favor. very low. That's great. Gave me the old uncle nephew discount, which was nice. But, yeah. But it's still very expensive. For the, for the first year. For the first, we, yeah, we for, the, family for the discount. first year, yeah, that's it. <laughs> After that, but then when we pushed out, was we ended up getting the second patent and everything. Like that. So as you're filing the first patent, what are you guys working on? Are you working on actually building the product, getting some deeper iterations of it? Yeah. So yeah. before we finished filing first patent, we wanted to make sure that well, while I was going through the patent office, we wanted to make sure that uh, we could come up with a design that made sense mm -hmm. and that um, we didn't let anybody know about it. As funny as that sounds, because once it becomes known yeah it becomes unpatentable sure so we kind of tried to keep it as hush hush as best we possibly could mm -hmm. but we started to run it through some tests <clears throat> you know any type of prototyping we could do uh we, remember we did prototyping at my my house was the first yeah was the first actual prototype that was we we started with the toilet paper rolls <laughs> then we tried <laughs> that's so funny we tried di uh dipping toilet paper rolls into uh like plastic dip um but we ended up trying to 3D print eventually, but before we even got there, actually... It wasn't strong enough, right? That resin is No, it thin. was way too soft. And if we were going to incorporate a blade into it, soft wasn't the way to go. We uh, we were at Fio's house shortly after you had moved in. Yeah, this we is good. a lot of nice new stuff around, and we tried <laughs> melting our own plastic on his stove. We ruined his wife's pots. <laughs> we did. We're pulling. <laughs> we bought like melt. It was like a melt your own plastic kit. So we bought it, and we're trying to melt it on the stove and burning the hell out of ourselves and pulling hot molten <laughs> plastic and dripping all over. Yep. It was it was awful. And at what point are you guys like, all right, maybe this is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what we ended up doing was we said, okay, we definitely need help building prototypes yeah, and, and things find of that the nature. Yeah. So we ended up uh, going through, uh, we got into a program called Valley Venture Mentors here in, yeah, in the Valley. Here, yeah. And just based on a concept, on an idea, on a, AKA toilet paper roll. And do they give you any money? Do they just give you guidance? What's the premise of the of being accepted into the program? So they just give us guidance is okay. really what it is. But the best thing for us that came out of that program was the connections we made. Mm -hmm. We it's made networking on steroids. Yeah. Is, I mean, if, if you can understand the concept, and we had this talk when we first started that uh, no matter what, we would always take the meeting. Yeah. No matter if it seemed dumb or it seemed like it couldn't get... Always take you know, the meeting, sit down and hear what people have to say. And yeah, maybe 80% of the people uh, that we met through that couldn't bring any value to what we were trying to do. They sure. had value, but just not for what we were trying to do. Yeah. Uh, but the, the 10, the, the eight to 10% of the people that we met through that program uh, were, were vital in teaching us That's what, great. what we needed to know. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So anyway, so through that program, we ended up at, talking to a gentleman who said, hey, come pitch for this other manufacturing seminar we got going on. And we went and did that. Okay. And through that, there was a gentleman there who said, hey, I can, uh, I think I can hook you guys up with a grant through 
Massachusetts to actually build a prototype wow. at this company called CCAT, um, which we ended up getting the grant. And then how we much actually, was the grant for? It was it was ten ten thousand dollars worth of I don't know if it was just equipment or or um, labor, but I mean they're they're three D printers. They have a three D printer there the size of a, a garage. Mm. You know, and yeah, like the technology they have there and and the the printer that we were making our parts on was, <laughs> was ridiculous. Sure. You know I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So we so finally, that's great. Okay. And and it helped too that the director over there was a uh was a former Vietnam Marine infantryman. So that, that helped. You had us. a brotherhood with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a kinship there for yeah. sure. Yeah, an appreciation. So that's how we got to the first now testable part where mm-hmm. we could actually kind of run it through the ringer and, and see if people like it. And the patent's still moving forward, you're waiting on that. Yep. Okay. First patent doesn't get issued to twenty eighteen. Okay. When did but, you submit it? It was Ooh. over. They, I think when we started, I asked the same question. I was like, how long is this shit going to take? <laughs> like, I think the pamphlet I saw was like 12 to 18 months. That shit was like over two and a half years before we got our first one. Wow. Yeah. It's incredible. It but the, Are you guys time. going crazy during this time mentally? Or are you like, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, I, I figured it was going to get issued. I mean, I was real confident, but we, were, we had so many other things going on. It was like, I'm glad we did that at the beginning. Right. So put that on someone else's plate. And now we got we can focus on other things while someone else is getting it done. But yeah, it took a long time for that first one to come back. I think the toughest thing for me on that was when, was just the fact that we were, we were building this product, but we we're trying to keep it hush hush. Mm-hmm. So we weren't out there trying to acquire funding. We weren't out there really pounding the pavement with it. Right. We're trying to do everything kind of below the radar while we see if this patent can get issued. Right. And the fact that it was taking so long, that's what was killing me. Yeah. Like, you so. can, yeah. Yeah. The momentum is so important for exactly. any company. And when you can't do anything about it, like that would drive me crazy. That's something that drives me crazy. In real estate mm-hmm. development, it's really slow. Some projects can take a year, two years. Mm-hmm. And it fucking drives me crazy. Because coming from tech, you just want to, it's always like move fast and break things, right? And so you get used to this mode of just like trying and failing, trying and failing. But at least you're doing something. And so it's like uh, you have to learn some patience, which I for sure did not have. Still struggling with, but. I hear that. Plus, Adams thought it was going to take like, he's like, oh, he's like, this is going to take two tries of prototyping. (laughs) We're going to figure this out on the first try. And if we're not, it's going to be 99% of the way there. I was like, I know exactly what this product (laughs) needs to do, what it needs to look like. And then we'd come back with a 3D print and I'd be like, well, but then, so we ended up, once we got the grant and we were, uh, we were working with the prototypes there, we got to at least where I thought looking at the part was 90% there, like some small changes, maybe we get invited to. A program, I, I won't say the exact name of the program, but it was it offered nothing to us. We were sitting in the auditorium. He wasn't a fan. He wasn't a fan of the program. And I was like, what the hell are we doing here? You know what I mean? Okay. And take the meeting. Just take the meeting. Exactly. What happened, what happened exactly. to that one? Well, that's why I said we're going to take the meeting. But once I got there, I was like, oh, man, this is dumb. But Theo ends up uh, not paying attention to what's going on in front of him and chatting with the gentleman next to him who... Uh, Ends up putting Theo in contact with him because Theo helped him out with some of his patent stuff. Gave him some good advice. So he hooked us up with this guy who turns out was the lead manufacturer for a piece of military equipment that I had owned for years. It's Mm. a fantastic piece of gear. And this guy that was this guy's engineer that sat next to Theo at this bullshit meeting (laughs) was the lead designer. They're all throughout the military. So he puts us in contact wow. with him. Incredible, incredible. We contact. go out to meet him. Serendipity's hit. <laughs> find out this guy actually is making or developing the the new rucksack frames for all Army and Marine Corps. He builds holsters for specialized military <laughs> units. He's, he's the guy. He's he's the, he's the guy. He's guy. The, he's the guy we've been looking for. <laughs> the guy. And Cinderella. then we said, we, I, I, he's like, what do you got? I explained it to him. I showed him a prototype. And he's like, ooh, we got a lot of work to do. So I, <laughs> I thought we were 90 and he knocked me back to like 40% there. And okay. then we went back to the drawing board with him and, and started using his expertise to actually make it uh, military spec. That's incredible. Yeah. All because we went to the meeting. We so it was good. Meeting. It worked out. Absolutely. It, it did. It was funny. Did you leave the program <laughs> once, once you met this guy? Oh, we left the program before it finished that day. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I guess at that point, that's that's so what we always tell people. Serendipity is such a part of entrepreneurship. 
It is. And it's like, you just kind of to your point, right? You just have to take the meeting, yep. take the call. You have to try. You never know whose uncle's brother's cousin can be passionate about your product. Absolutely. And that changes your whole, the whole course. Mm-hmm. So then you got involved with him and then he's giving you guidance on the thickness of plastics. Like it's a much more different conversation. I can imagine like the specs on plastic. Uh, yeah, smaller draft angles <laughs> and you know, the, everything from, I mean, you can see on that unit there, the, the <laughs> amount of blade exposure that we had no idea about um, that the military won't touch if it's uh what do you, when you say blade exposure, what do you mean? So the, uh, the way that this, this bump here, yeah. obviously you put your cord into there to cut it. Um, it keeps other stuff from getting in there and being pulled onto the blade, whether you're stuffing this down into a pouch, it doesn't get trapped. You're, you're getting reaching in with your hand. You're not going to cut yourself the blade on that. You can stick your thumb in there. We have an like inferior product so for people listening <laughs> <laughs> next to us. It's their competition. Oh, like right here. Yeah. Yeah. So that could never be put in a rock sack, go bag, things of that nature. Got it. And it's it's tough to carry if you don't so know. He, where but he's the is. one advising you. He's yeah. he's like yeah. very familiar with this. Took took the, the basics of our design and then went back to the computer and al- almost started from scratch. Yeah. And then delivered us uh what what you see here now, which is the manufactured product. But yeah, prototyping flew once we it made went that fast. Count. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because uh, he knew exactly what to look for. He knew exactly what to look for. He knew exactly what plastic to build it out of. He knew exactly how to structure the product so that it would fit in every aspect that we were asking for. And was he giving was, you guidance on, like, this is how the military buys also? So he knows, does he know Does he know it to that extent where he's like, if you do these certain things? Then no, it makes really. It, he's more okay. just the designer. Okay. The, from what we understand, they contact him and are like, these holsters suck. Make a new one. He doesn't. He doesn't sell it. He doesn't get rich off of it. Got it. But he's the mastermind. He's yeah. the go-to guy. He's the engineer. Yeah. It was it was incredible. <laughs> like, you know, and then we'd send the, we'd still have some, um, by that point, our grant with uh, CCAT for prototyping had right. run out because, yeah. well, me and Adams were prototyping and that was, yeah, we that was, that was running painful. Running through units. Running through it. money, yeah. running through units or running through the grant money. So we ended up funding the, the last amount of it. And actually Adams just the, the fact that him and this gentleman from CCAT had such a great relationship really helped us out in terms of cost yeah. to get these final ones done. But it flew at the end. So then what happened? So once you meet him, well, first of all, are you spending a lot of money to work with him or is it reasonable? I would call it more reasonable than, than big money. Okay. I think he was, in terms of dollars spent, he was well worth the money. And I, I actually, I would pay more for him. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's clearly helping Hands you out down. in a super meaningful way. Yep. Yeah. What, and then did he help everything? So he basically built this yep. to this point, to the finished product. Absolutely. And now it's time to buy a thousand of these? Is that <laughs> oh, much, mass produced? Much more. Okay. Yeah. Much, 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 much more. more. Well, so now it's time. So now, now we have, we just have a CAD system, a, a CAD design. Right. Now we have to do the whole. Which is super important. A lot of people don't realize that. You yes. got to have the CAD design. The specs are to the, to the millimeter, I imagine, maybe more. Yeah. Ma- yeah. Macro millimeter or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that way you can give it to any company and they can just make them for you quickly. Yeah. They make the injection mold. So then okay. we started looking at, there's new ways out there now of uh, you can actually make injection molds out of plastic that can yield 20 units. Okay. Um, and those are very cheap. Well, not very cheap, but they're cheaper. Mm-hmm. You can make molds out of aluminum that may last you or yield you, you know, a hundred, couple hundred units. Interesting. All the way up to different levels of steel that gets you uh, 500,000 units plus before you'll start to see any difference in the part. That's fascinating. It is. I would have never guessed that. Yeah. So then you guys, what'd you go with? Oh, we, <laughs> the we, Cadillac? We, we sat down and, and uh, he looks at me and goes, go big or go home. I go, all right. <laughs> so, you might as well, right? Might as well. That big. So there's, a, so there's actually a thing that, again, we didn't know about called a mud mold. So if you picture uh, a brick wall as uh as your injection mold cavity that makes the part People they make a already, they, <laughs> they, they make a they make a thing called a mud mold which is one brick okay uh and that brick can turn out parts as well so that's that's actually what we ended up buying was a mud mold which is a a clip in for an injection mold got it uh, right. but it's still made out of the highest quality steel um is if, it heavy like legit steel it's like a you probably, oh yeah probably couldn't pick it up with one hand yeah Oh no no no! Not a, no 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 no! You couldn't. I'm, I'm, literally, I'm literally thinking it's probably like 180 pounds, just one half. Of Jesus. It. Yeah. We have we have two of them. So and is it? So in my head, let me just make sure I get this. 
is it one mold or is it like a baking sheet of a hundred molds? It's it's yeah, one. It's a single. It's a single. It's called a single cavity mold. Okay. So well, do they do the other version? Oh yeah, it's like called, the muffin version, the six muffin yeah. version. <laughs> this, the six mu- muffin version is a uh, family mold. That's okay. what they call it. That's what they call it. That's what they call it. This is so fascinating. Yeah. That's so cool. And you guys knew none of this before, obviously. So you're like, no, no, I know. Not a damn thing. <laughs> you want the Costco mold? <laughs> oh yeah, big learning curve. Best part so you went this. big. Mm-hmm. We went big, which is um, great. Which is great because you know if you're gonna gonna bet on something and you wouldn't change much anyway right I imagine. no absolutely not i don't think so um eventually down the road i mean if we run into the problem where this mold gets beat down and starts turning out bad parts what a wonderful problem to have right uh because we've sold a shitload of these you have a happy problem um and what's your relationship like at this point in terms of getting along are you agreeing on everything oh we hate each other (laughs) but the good thing was we hated each other going into it so (laughs) I don't, Is I don't it husband think we, and wife like? What's the? I don't think we've ever. We've definitely disagreed, but mm-hmm. uh, I don't think we've ever really let it get more than a. All right, well, we don't agree. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, we, and we said at the beginning that if I, uh, at any point, no matter what it was about, if both of us weren't on board with it, then it wasn't happening. Okay. Um, That's really important. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, there's been plenty, of, plenty it's, of times that I've wanted to make moves on something, and he wasn't about it. And uh, the majority of the time, uh, that saved us some money. Some of the time, I, some of the time I was right, but uh, no, I just, I just think that we've always. Uh, uh, you have like, that respect for each other, like any good partnership. Absolutely. You know, you that's gotta, hard, man. That's rare. That's yeah. a hard part. Yeah, I feel like we complement each other really well. Like, yeah, thought process that Adams is. You well, know, the thought I'm, process in our relationship is that when I get asked a question, I don't know. Then you're expected to know. Oh yeah, that's so the that's the, yeah. like, you know, I just get to pass off. Right. Oh, Fio, Fio knows. Yeah. Talk to our CFO, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're good. He's the he's the hard charger. And I'm the one who sits back and thinks too much about it. So we meet in the middle, and it's that's it's great. A, it's a good partnership. Yeah. Absolutely. So how many when you first put in like the bulk order? How many units did you guys have to order, or did you decide to order? We we did you go ahead you take it you did some negotiating with our manufacturer originally we thought it was going to be tens of thousands and we're like holy shit how are we going to pay for this yeah. right that's big money got it down to six six thousand <laughs> six thousand okay and didn't have to how'd you do that were you have, like look did, we're gonna we're gonna blow the fuck up you have no idea you're ensuring future revenues yeah, here you got to sell sell them on the story which is exactly yeah. what, I I think our story is. Uh, is unique enough and real enough that, that that's what people see the allure of this product. Yeah, know? if you get a military contract, it's gangbusters. Exactly. Yeah. And I think they, they see that and they're willing to take a bit more of a gamble. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is that I know that, uh, you know, they're trying to start a bit of a little, little bit more of an outreach to get new companies Smaller. in, yeah. which, is, which is nice. We kind of walked in perfect time. Yeah. And, you know, they're used to dealing with the big guys. So we just had to taper their understanding that we're not the big guys yet, mm-hmm. but there is this potential. So work with us. Let's That's smart of them because I'm sure they're yeah, not running it was. at 100% capacity anyway. And so yeah. you guys offer them an ability to just do a quick side side project, let's call it. Mm-hmm. But then they grow their, side their project, book of business. Side project in a like 1.8 million square foot. Yeah, facility. Their facility is amazing. When, really? When we walked in there, it's it? actually... It's actually local over in uh, East Long Meadow, the Carter Monday facility. Okay. Um, but when we walked in there to s- watch our mold be shot, we're walking by Candyland that's being shot <laughs> on seven different machines that are as big as the house, you know? They do all the Hasbro, and the, Hasbro stuff. And or the okay. Bradley. So it's that facility. Yeah. yeah, I've driven by yeah, that facility. Toys, yeah. Got it. Got it. And then, you know, walking forever through this massive, massive warehouse floor, and then we get to our machines that now quit quarters, and it was the coolest thing. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. It's de- definitely a, a, a little side Your project Your little baby. Them, but it's our, it's our little corner <laughs> in this massive, massive room. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. For now. For now. For, For now. now. Yeah. Candy, For now is fuck right. Candyland. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Who plays that shit anyway? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we and, don't. And just in case you wonder, the mold itself that we ended up buying is, is I think, warranted for 500,000 quick cords. Okay. So we should. So you're good. So we're good. We're good to start. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you guys did you guys split the money up front? Did you guys raise the money in terms of for the first investment of the six thousand units? Uh, we we went uh, debt finance on that. 
Okay. So, so you go to the bank. So we went to the bank. Uh, Adams grabbed like an account. SBA loan, or what did you guys? What did you guys do? So we actually did a, a simple line of credit. Okay. Really, what happened is Adams grabbed the guy, pulled him over the, the table. They were happy <laughs> to give us money, you know. And <laughs> do you know what I did for you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know how many tours yeah. I served? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> exactly. So no, this is good. Uh, simple line of credit. We did have a little strategy going in where we said, "Hey, look, here's the plan. Let's debt finance this. Um, so no equity." And, yep. and and um let's smart you're keeping your company try, yep Got exactly that's, you thought this through yeah but we said on top of it let's set up a successful kickstarter and let's run it and we're gonna bank on the fact that we're gonna have a successful kickstarter in order to pay down that line of credit and so hence and so the far kickstarter, yeah so right? so when you guys decided to do the kickstarter and how did you decide on the amount was it basically the line of credit or were you like, let's give ourselves some padding? What do you think we, what do we think we can raise? How Good did question. You, we you wanna... found out that, and I, I never mess around on Kickstarter. I'm not one of those guys. Um, I've never, <laughs> never like. Nobody's one, of, nobody, <laughs> nobody's one of those guys until you end up being one of those guys. Yeah, right? Yeah. So I just thought of like when I, if I were to go on Kickstarter and see that a company's, you know, trying to raise, you know, 1.5 a million mm-hmm. and I see that their campaign's at 27,000. I'm not buying anything from them, you know. It's a perception thing. It's the absolute psychological perception. Yeah. So the perception. We ended up um downing our ask all the way down to uh well, well under what we needed on that factor and it was wildly successful. Yeah. It worked out. So what did you guys decide on how much was the amount? We asked for 8,000. Yep. Okay. And we got just under two days left in the campaign, we're over 350% funded. What does that mean? 27,000. Yeah, okay. That's great. Yeah. So, so congratulations. Oh, thank you. What do you think the secret is? So, so Kickstarter obviously helps you a little bit to give you some guidance. But at the end of the day, it's all just putting it out there to social media. Did you guys get picked up on any news outlets or anybody that, any military groups that picked it up and sort of ran it through their networks? Actually, uh, we did get picked up, but I'll... We got picked up by American Military News, who ran an article on us. Okay. And actually, did you reach out to them, or was it a complete accident? We had actually reached out to them a while back. Okay. And uh, when I say a while back, it was when we were <coughs> developing our prototype. We got our first patent issued. We were kind of feeling, you I know, gotcha. Yeah, feeling made, good. We're like, to yeah, make friends. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, they actually ended up running a quick just article as to, hey, expect something coming soon. Okay. A while back, and so we basically reached out to them again and said, hey, look, we're launching the Kickstarter. And they were more than happy to to run a great piece on Matt and the and the product. That's great. Which was awesome. Yeah. And what was their distribution in terms of like um are they focused in where in the United States? Everywhere? Is it did you like did you see people making contributions from oh, I yeah, don't know, all, California, Texas? All over the US from yeah. that one. Um That's awesome. But, but that was really I think the only like media. The, another uh small article popped up. Yep. On um a website called Soldier Systems. Uh, just a real quick uh, bit that we could actually track some some uh, pledges some coming in from that yeah. fr- to the Kickstarter. But I think the main 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 thing was, uh, and that by no means are we professionals at it, but <laughs> understanding <laughs> the power of social media. I love how you say that about everything. Yeah, we, don't, yeah. we don't understand shit, but it's the, power, <laughs> the power of social media to. To actually go in there and put a picture up and, you know, on the palm of your hand on your phone, single out who you, whose face you want to shove it in. Yeah. It's insane. And the mm-hmm. amount of Nat's ass detail that you can get down to is, is absolutely crazy. That's and a, that's that's a technical term. Nat's ass? Nat's, Nat's ass. ass. It's very small. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you beat your goal by so much, were you like, we should have set the goal bigger? Where does your mind go? No, I think for me... Our mind goes as to how we, we could have run the campaign better. Some okay. nuances that... How would you do that? Um, so, for instance, I think that some of the pledges... Because the way the Kickstarter works is uh, you come in and you pledge money. Mm-hmm. But you don't actually get charged it unless the campaign is quote-unquote successful. Unless it win, right? You got to hit your total. Got to hit your total. Right. We gave away way too many at a massive price break. So, there was no rush allure to, I got to get this quick. Oh, yeah. there's no scarcity. You guys right. didn't have like we, first 100 we developed... people get and then everyone else gets nothing. Yeah, something. so we did not create that that incentive to buy okay. and to buy quick. Okay. And I would have rejiggered our pledges to make sure that we could actually have created some incentive 
throughout the life of the campaign. Did you make that decision based on some of the advice you got from Kickstarter or was it just? There really wasn't too much that we were going on and there was no similar products. Um, Right. It was Mr. Numbers over here looking at our our margins. (laughs) Mr. Numbers. (laughs) (laughs) That's my my legal name. I love that. (laughs) Yeah, it was, it was him looking at the margins and kind of what we could afford and how we could, you know, if you if you tell someone that, uh, you know, the product's $14, um, it does a lot more when you say the product's 50% off, even right. if the 50% off is 14 bucks. Totally. So. The bigger number always wins. Right. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> we did that, but the banks that we were creating were, were way, way too big. Yeah. So in other words... We said, hey, look, you get, you know, 50% off, Mm -hmm. but it's 50% off of the first 500 units as opposed to 50% off of the first 100 units. Right. Because we we went gangbusters in the beginning and sold like 250 to 300 of those original units in in a couple of days. Yeah. And right then and there, we realized, oh. We messed up. We, yeah. yeah, And and once you put those pledges in a Kickstarter and the campaign goes, they're locked. Yeah. Right. can't adjust them. Right. Yeah. Rightfully can't go, just so. That'd be, pretty, <laughs> yeah. that'd be pretty shady if yeah. you could go in there and change the shit up. <laughs> that was only so, yesterday. Yeah. There was 490. Now there's only two. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's so funny, too, because, we're, we're, you know, you can crunch different numbers totally. into a, and make it a different scenario every single time. But yeah. uh, we ended up coming up where we originally had the right number. We originally had said, let's do 100 at a 50% price break. But then, you know... After waiting and waiting and waiting, to, as we're starting to put together the Kickstarter, yeah. we ended up getting it up to close to you know whatever it ended up being three to four hundred units at that price break, or is it was it two fifty whatever two, it was two fifty and five hundred. It was okay. It was two fifty at that we price point. We talked about doing five hundred and a thousand. So glad we didn't do that. Oh my gosh, yeah. So like, we were that came up in conversation. We're like, no, that'd be a bit different. I'm so glad we didn't. Do yeah, that. me too. But and are you guys shipping them out yourselves? We are going to fulfill them ourselves, at least for the Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they're going to be assembled at this place called Sunshine Village, and then they're going to either ship, or we're still working on the logistics, either out of Sunshine Village, or okay. they're going to come to a separate location, and, and we'll handle the shipping. Got it. But that's all in the process as we as we build out that, that supply chain. When you were thinking about the platform to go on, did you pick Kickstarter because there's no equity? Basically, you retain the whole equity. Like, you could have chose a WeFunder or something like that. Did you choose Kickstarter just because you don't have to give away equity? Basically, Was that... Did you think about that? Or it yes, was, it we was did. The, it was either them or Indiegogo. Yeah, and the okay. same business models. For, same thing. For yeah. Both. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we're probably going to be because we have enough time between uh, when the manufacturing run is happening and when our Kickstarter ends. We're probably going to be running a, a campaign on Indiegogo like day after Kickstarter ends. Really? And just keep riding the wave. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. How much will you set your minimum there? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. <laughs> that <is> a good <laughs> question. <laughs> I would do fifty. That's not a yeah. So we, we're working through those numbers right now as to the, the smartest play uh, as we transfer from Kickstarter to Indiegogo. We don't have anything solid yet, but we're yeah. definitely shooting to lower quantities, higher higher values, and well, I mean, I mean less um, of, a, of a price break on the product. Sure. And then as you're thinking about, so from the Kickstarter, I imagine you get a lot of attention, people coming to your website, and then we started talking about this earlier, people from overseas reaching out saying they want to distribute for you guys what's that what's that whole process been like because what's interesting to me in terms of your business is you clearly have a goal from day zero where it's if you get a military contract it's you win and it's massive right Mm -hmm. right but in the process the kickstarter and even getting overseas is a b2c play right The, the business to consumer you're trying to get these in the hands of anyone who just wants them in terms of time how does one pursue a military contract while pursuing the consumer, just your everyday consumer? That's a great question. That is a great question. Because initially, that was the only thing they were focused on. And there was nothing in the middle. It was toilet paper roll, let's sell it to the military. Right. And there was nothing in between. <laughs> and Which is almost nice. I mean, it's nice. It's it, nice when it's that linear. Because, you know, right. it's the way I think about entrepreneurship. It's like you have to plant your flag and that's it. Right. And the companies that get in trouble try to plant 40 different flags. They're like, right. we're going to be blue and green and red and like serve children and parents and adults. And then it's just like a complete mess. Yeah. Theo ended up actually bringing this up, but <clears throat> the barriers to entry are so high to get into the military. There's so much red tape you have to negotiate. Yeah. Um, and we used uh, 
Camelback as, as a great uh, example. When I joined the Marine Corps, uh, not that it was that long ago, but it kind of actually was now if we really look at it. But uh, we still wear, wore uh, pistol belts with ca- uh, a canteen on each kidney. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's how we did it in boot camp. Those are heavy. Those aren't. They're heavy. You try running at them. It's just like someone <laughs> punching in the kidneys you. over and over and over again. They're awful. Um, not to mention that when you get issued them, how many other dudes have owned this canteen? You know, they just turn it back <laughs> in and then like, this is awful. So, and then Camelback comes out. Uh, but Camelback didn't decide to make a bladder, fill it with water and sell it to the, to the military. Mm-hmm. They started going after the outdoorsmen, mostly, um, cyclists. Mm-hmm. Uh, and their, their motto was to just get it out there and get it in people's hands so that people start saying, this is a way better mousetrap. Mm, and okay. that's exactly what happened with the military was they eventually were like, gets you on the radar. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. That's actually pretty with, linear too. With us having the tunnel vision of so the military, so the military, we were completely overlooking the fact that uh, the outdoorsman community, the, the hikers, the hunters, the campers, boaters, fishermen, everyone uses paracord. Mm-hmm. Everybody does. And we weren't even focusing on that whatsoever. So if we can get that into those communities, and drum up enough buzz around us, it's only a matter of time. That coupled with the fact that one of the main points of our campaign on Kickstarter was the more money we raise, the more we're going to donate to active duty military. So we're up to like 800 units that we're giving oh, away donating. for free. Yeah, That's yeah. great. And we're, dri- we're going to throw them in my truck. We're going to drive down to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. I'm going to call up my Marine buddies. I'm going to get on the base. We're going to have cameras. I'm going to make a big deal out of it. We're going to give out beer. And I'm just going to start. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be like... Uh, like with rocking, the megaphone, rock, I can see with the megaphone yeah, yeah. And standing yeah. on top of the truck, throwing them out to everyone, crowd going nuts and everything, yeah. citing riots, and it'll be great. That's great. To answer that question of you know, kind of getting the product into the military is this is one of those products that is you know nobody in the supply chain is gonna kind of stick their neck out and say, hey, you know, what? I'm gonna buy a hundred thousand of these for the boys and see see if it works out. Right. Uh, so our thought process has been from the beginning, piggybacking off that camel pack, is that get the boys to ask for it. Let's get the people in the military to ask the people in the supply chain yeah. to go out and get this. And when that happens, then we'll get our order. <clears throat> the inception campaign. The inception campaign is exactly yeah. how we plan to do it. So that's really smart. So when I think about what you just said, like the whole story around like, you know, camel, camelback, you have a clear example. Mm-hmm. And so that story resonates in my mind with investors. It has to resonate. And so are you guys thinking, let's go raise some real money? And sort of blow this out of the water? Are you thinking, let's just continue to do it to bootstrap little by little? And and uh, the way I look at money is it can accelerate a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so you can the way I think about it is you're either going to get that military contract 10 years from now, or you can get a lot of funding and get it in two years. That's how I think about things. Right. Are you guys... Uh, <laughs> what do you guys think? You know, <laughs> now that you're, cl- you're clearly seeing signals from the market, right? Right. The Kickstarter worked. Um, things are working. You're about to go do this amazing giveaway that's going to create a lot of buzz a lot of hype i think uh in the interim uh because essentially what what's your government contract it's the biggest wholesale order you're ever going to get yeah um a lot of cash needed huge right right uh but what is you know we never thought that this was going to be you know a successful company selling at retail on our shopify website Mm -hmm. um the in-betweens was the other avenues for wholesale there's literally a million and one uh, gear tactical websites and stores out there. Okay. Um, the subscription box companies, low customer acquisition costs. You attract the company, they pump out the new cool products to, to the end consumer. Yeah. Um, so I think the initial short term <clears throat> goal is to get rid of our 6,000 unit minimum order quantity as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. And the way we do that is on smaller wholesale orders. Um, and then hopefully down the road, like we were asking about earlier, we get one of those family molds that one shot produces 50 parts, 100 parts. Yeah. Is there any desire to make other products? I'll circle back around to the original sure. part of the question. It was like talking about, do we want to bring on investors? Do we think it's a good idea? Yeah. Should we? Do we feel like it's the right time? Um, the short answer is we're weighing, the, we're weighing the options. It's something that's constantly in the back of our head. And we're trying yeah. to make sure that whatever we do makes the most sense at the right time. But... Um, we really love owning our company. Yeah, and we've already bet. We we bet 
once on ourselves in terms of debt financing. Right. And I think we're pretty confident in our capabilities after this run through that debt financing might be the way to go. Mm -hmm. And whenever we've talked about pulling on any type of equity player, we've always talked about pulling on a strategic equity player. Totally. Understanding that money, money's money. Right. Right. But, and we've gotten actually a bunch of interest from people looking to pump money into us, mm -hmm. which is nice, but we've always talked about the fact that it needs to be someone who brings more than just money to the table. Yeah. So they can get you on QVC. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. So that's, that's, that's how smart. we think about it. Yeah. Um, it's great that we're actually contemplating it now. Yeah. It's a um, happy problem. It's pretty cool. It's, yeah. it's fun. Yeah. And it's, and I mean, we're contemplating it now more than ever. So it's cool is, because you can see it. So it's so clear in my head, right? A lot of companies that we have on the podcast, it's, it's kind of like, we love where you're at now. Things are obviously going well, but in order for you to scale, you have to do monumentally different things or more things. And then what those things are become huge variables. Like you don't know, they have to make the decision with you guys. It's really clear. Actually, it's pretty straightforward. And that's like <laughs> yeah. the simplicity to that is yeah. really nice. <laughs> that's what I mean. One of the things about the project that was so alluring to everyone else too, is that I am the target, the target market. Right. And I know exactly who it is, who else it is. You're you know? solving your problem. Right. Like, I don't know. We don't have to go out and be and do any market study. I, I know. I know who they are. <laughs> we do. You know we, do. I mean? we, we do it though. But, but yeah. yes, we, to his point, yeah. he's been 100% on all of the outcomes of any studies we've done. So it's good. What's next for you guys? So the other question was like new line. Sorry. Yes. Different products, anything mm -hmm. in that? What we would, as I said, alluded to earlier is that, uh, there's so many inefficiencies in the military. Uh, yeah. And as when I was a young private, private first class, Lance Corporal, I'd stand 18, 19 hours of post straight and get to know everything about the guy I'm standing next to five times over. And then you just start complaining about how much things suck <laughs> and what you would do differently. And then you do that for seven months straight. You know what I mean? Or maybe some, for some people, four years, you know, their whole enlistment. But uh, some of the greatest ideas uh, that make things so much more efficient and better come from 18, 19, 20 year old kids mm. um, from you know the backwoods of America. They have these phenomenal ideas in order to help the situation, but they have no clue how to bring it to light. Just yeah. like just like we didn't. Um, so the value in our in our company as an entrepreneur and always being ready, ready to pivot may not be that Quickcord is a is a rock star of a product and an absolute hit. You know, the value might be that we figured out how to take a bar napkin idea uh, and, and put it through the, the pipeline and, and bring it to the military. Mm. And if we can do that, you can make one video and put it out on social media and I'll have a hundred motherfuckers banging on the door and say, <laughs> I got a great idea. Yeah. You know, you could even start your own like incubator for military people. Literally. Yeah. Right. You have the network now in some mm -hmm. way for some of the things. Yeah. It's, it's funny how many, how big of a network we actually have now kind of because of the fact that we've probably made, you know, 400 billion mistakes. Yeah. You know? Yeah, the mistakes are everything. I mean, the success teaches you nothing. Absolutely. But it's hard to swallow, right? It's like, yes. God, did we really do that? Yeah. But when you guys think about, so we're entering the new decade, 2030s on the horizon. Do you guys go into this place in your mind of like, all right, what is, you know, who who is Maddie? Who is Fio in 2030? And what does that mean to your business? Like, where do you see quick cord, I guess? I mean, not, not from a business perspective, but just when you think 10 years from now. What's quick cord at? Is it a household name? Does every military personnel have it? Yeah, I, I, I absolutely hope so. Um, it's not just that it keeps you know your your cord untangled. It just it it gives you an ability that you didn't have before. Mm -hmm. You know, so so often, and, and Marines thrive on it. But the cards are always stacked against us. It's nice to just have it tip a little bit more in your favor, and that's what the product does. And it's, it's a yeah. powerful statement. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely want guys going to barracks getting getting issued a quick cord. Yeah. Hundred percent. It's a great mm -hmm. product, super light. I love it. It's beautiful. Thank yeah. you. High quality. Thank I'm you a very fan. Much. I'm a big fan. <laughs> where can people find you? For people listening, where can they find you on Facebook, Instagram? Yeah, yeah. we got a uh, website, quickcord.com. Um, we're on Facebook. Quickcord with the K. Q, yeah, Q-U-I-K. Yeah. Oh, Remember that. Remember yeah, that. Q-U-I-K. Definitely. That. definitely. <laughs> I don't know. I've, we've actually probably missed a shitload of uh, yeah, people, emails yeah. and meetings because of the way we decided to spell our company name. Yep. But, 
Uh, <laughs> do you yeah. regret? Do you regret that? So, so the company. It's funny, right? When we came up with the company name, part of the, the we looked at um, getting the just domain name and quickcord.com at, at that time was like going for what, like two thousand bucks or something like that, a thousand bucks. You talking like about that. the asshole that tried the? Oh no, that us? came that came after. Oh, but we, we yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, good. That's, that's another. That's a good story. That's another shit show story. But uh, but yeah, we looked at it. We we had, we had no money at the time. We we're like, we're not gonna spend that much money. Right. Oh, let's. Let's quote unquote be clever and spell it Q U I K, because it's quicker. Because it's like quicker. It. You, drop, you drop the C because yeah. it's quicker. It would also be weird because then you'd have a C K and then a C again. Right. That's you know what I'm there saying. You go. Yeah. That's there. All right. And it fits. I don't know. I like. I, I'm a fan. I'm a I, fan. I really, I really like it too. Yeah. The 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 website thing was funny though. Yeah. We started. We tried to buy the domain name, and we were we were very young at that point. Right. And we made a YouTube video, I think. Explaining ex- the product with the toilet paper roll, uh, and I, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, I don't which know we took down by the way. We, we ended up taking <laughs> down. It down. Bunch of, his brothers looked at him like, "You guys are idiots! Get that shit off the internet now!" Uh, but someone found it, realized the allure of the product, saw that it worked, saw that it was cool, tried to probably find out more information, saw that the way we spelled it, quick cord, no one owned the domain name, and we had already looked at it about buying it, and we thought that whatever the price was was too expensive for us. So this asshole goes and buys <laughs> quickcord.com. Mm. And we're having a meeting in my basement, maybe getting a little tuned up and saucy. And we <laughs> go back on to try to look at the domain name again. And this dude actually emails me while we're me and him are sitting in my basement and tries to sell the domain name to us for 10 grand. Wow. Yeah. I was livid. <laughs> <laughs> I was livid. So we we ended up putting that on the back burner, and then he it, it it went another long time, like maybe a year, and it expired, and he let it lapse, and I we got a notification that Picked he, it right he, up. he let it lapse, and we bought it for eight bucks. That's great. But yeah, it's pretty it was, yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> That was great. Was heated. Oh yeah, Smart. Just, Who is this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What a troll! It's yeah. shocking that people do that. Yep. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure it makes a business out of it. Yeah. I never understood that. No, no value. You're just being a dick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had just incorporated. Like, we went through the process of like starting the business, yeah. and we had just incorporated it. And that's when he picked it. Up. That's right. Oh, that's right. And that's, we like we like annoying. so we that's so we incorporated we incorporated mm-hmm. in like that night. We went down there to, to you know just to start to tight up stuff. Yeah. TV when he, when he tighten everything up. Came across we're like, what the yeah. Hell is this? And we're like, all right, let's pick this. I'm prepared to sell this to you. Fuck you are. <laughs> <laughs> Paying you shit. I was like, that's if it'll change the company yeah, yeah. name. Like, We're going somewhere else. <laughs> Fuck this guy. That's awesome. What are your yeah. families been like through this process? Has it been difficult? Is it people like, what the fuck are you doing with this hobby? And then at the beginning, right? I mean, you, like, oh, yeah. people are like, what are you doing? There's a bunch of things here. At the yeah. beginning, everyone's like, oh, why are you guys doing this? Or you really think you're going to get it? Um, and some of them are your friends, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's weird, right? But uh at, at least my yeah, my family, strange. my my girlfriend I mean, I'm I got two kids, a girlfriend, and uh, somehow I'm always getting into other stuff too. Um they've just been super, super supportive. I work my, my full time time gig is a is a paramedic. Uh, so I work two twenty fours a week. Mm-hmm. So I have a lot of other free time to do totally things for the company, things with my family. This guy works crazy hours, Monday through Friday, uh, still finds time to do everything that he needs to do. Uh, he steals time away from his job. He's, you know, th- this is a guy making business calls in the bathroom, you know, with the, with the, with the door locked. <laughs> you're, not, you're not supposed to say that, you know, out loud. They don't know where you work. <laughs> yeah. so. Just hit the well, mute plus, button. You don't, you don't need to work there in the future. Anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I give Theo all the appreciation in the world. He, uh, his, his wife has to be pissed off at me half the time because he gets home from a long day at work and I'm I'm the first one blowing his phone up because I got 10 things that he needs to explain to me that I don't understand. I think both of our networks have been, our immediate family has been super, super supportive um, and they definitely didn't need to be because it it's definitely occupied every bit mm. of free time that we've had. Yeah, my wife has been unbelievable through the process and my immediate family has been yeah, just like Adam said, it's incredible the amount of support. That's great. It's, it's yeah. so important. So yep. I feel I feel like on that question, I feel like we've gotten so much more, so much more overwhelming yeah. positive support than Bang than the negative little uh, negative ones that you see here and there pop up. I tell it's, everybody, it's been such a good experience. Support is like the only currency I need. 
from yeah. anyone. Like it's the only thing that matters to me because it's so important, you know, like because what you're doing isn't easy. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy. You have your own moments while you're sleeping. You're like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Right. And so, yeah. but that's, mm -hmm. that's when the support matters the most. Um, thank you guys for being on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. This is fun. Yeah, let's fun. let's end it with this. What uh, what tips would you give people that are like on the verge of trying to start something or kind of where you guys were a long time ago with the toilet paper roll and <laughs> trying to take that next step? I guess my advice would be to uh, find the balance that Theo and I have found in each other. Uh, me being very, very aggressive uh, could have wasted a lot of money. Mm. Uh, for this company uh, but dragging your feet and being afraid to make decisions uh, doesn't get you anywhere and that's not just in business that's that's in life leadership anything yeah so i would say find that find that balance um of being out there a go-getter don't be afraid to take risks uh, but don't be foolish don't be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fine line to walk right yeah, it is. <laughs> but i'd say to piggyback on that you know don't worry too much about the back backup plan. I like right? that. You spend too much time with the backup plan. Yeah. Or thinking about the fact that you need That's a backup a plan. One. Yeah. Don't then, do it. Put that energy somewhere else. Exactly. Yeah. That's a good one. So take every meeting. Don't focus too That's much right. on the backup plan. <laughs> you know? I love it. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. This is Thanks good. For having us. We here at Startup the Storefront would love to hear feedback from you. Reach out and let us know what you think, either through rating us on the podcast app or by sliding into our DMs. You can find us both on Facebook and Instagram at Startup the Storefront. Our theme song is composed by Double Touch. If you want to learn more about the products and businesses featured on today's episode, check out the links in the show notes. And if you enjoyed the episode, consider subscribing because we've got a lot more great guests coming up that you won't want to miss. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.